will be a bit of a delay, but that delay will uh, be only for them, but not for us. How you doing, Adam? Good. How are you? Nice to nice to see you. It's great to see you too, and all the things that you arrange beside you and behind you. Yeah. What's your uh, What's your day been like? I was streaming. I just got off of like five hour stream with PSA Sitch, so doing super chats. So you you haven't had quite enough streaming yet. So there's more yeah. streaming still to do. I'm going. Okay. I've only two more hours left. So seven <laughs> hours today. What happens? You turn into a pumpkin at eight p.m. Uh, no, but I will. I am going to work on the comic for a few hours before bed. So, oh, what's the comic called? Uh, Supervillains Anonymous. Oh, uh, yes. What installment or episode or uh, what, what, what's it called? Issue one. Or? Issue one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And is the it inaugural a graphic novel issue or like graphic novel? Yeah. Six pages or something. Forty-eight page graphic novel. Okay. Yes. Right. I've been drawing it myself. Uh, I'm a hopeless perfectionist, so I'm laboring over mm. every detail. Mm -hmm. The book is already mostly drawn, completely lettered, uh, completely laid out, and I'm just coloring, finalizing some of the coloring and changing some of the drawing as I'm coloring it. So okay, yeah. Oh, and the writing did you do the writing yourself too no i wrote it with psa sitch okay yeah all right psa sitch co uh co-authors yeah yeah yes Wh which did you have to learn first the the coloring or the the inking or the the drawing or the letter uh comic comic drawing is i've been i'm a painter basically and been drawing and painting my entire life but doing comic books is a completely different thing a completely different animal so hmm. yeah is the, is the color layering all done in some sort of program all yeah digital? clip studio yeah okay. it's all done digitally yeah was that a was that a huge learning curve or sizable learning curve that. Mm, a bit i mean i've had to learn to use a tablet uh to do it so yeah oh that's weird. Okay. brand new yeah interesting drawing on a tablet is awesome i love it i love that yeah if you weren't a perfectionist what would be your uh output i could do one comic a month <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been doing this one then it's all we've been working on not under a year it'll be a year in february so okay Twelve and months. i don't you know because we didn't really we we launched our campaign and we weren't really sure i think we did like 30 days and another 30 days so we didn't we weren't going to actually do the comic until we made until the campaign was successful so mm. probably we've been working on it six months okay. you know, realistically so. Since you guys became successful uh -huh. with your campaign. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Successful in that we met our funding goal. There's a certain amount of money that you want to do. And obviously you have to forego other projects if you're going to be working on it. I mean, I, mm. I did, I've been drawn like crazy on this thing. So I've been devoting like way more time than I probably should, but mm. I'm just, it's a labor of love, obviously. So, well, excellent. Yeah. Is it, uh, well, the cool thing about, comic book stories mm. is that you have a well-read or literate fan base with the languages of superheroes and stuff like that and then superhero stories come with the backstory and then the present conflict and then some sort of like grand uh narrative that you guys can shoot for so you have a lot of th different things to do what, what how much building did you do before be you began building what do you mean like a uh, like world building or i mean Character we're building world, world building yeah, well, the characters are based on Sitch and Adam, so oh. we're we're selling it to our audience, and our audience, like we have pretty defined personalities already on the show, okay. so the personalities on the show kind of carry into the characters in the book, and it's it's been a lot of fun because it's kind of a collaborative thing with the audience because the audience has really kind of memeified Sitch and I in a lot of different ways that we've just kind of like, I didn't the, the, my character, the, the 
the Adam character, Adam Skull Crusher is the character's name in the book. Wait, is that um, his birth name or self-declared name? That's his supervillain name because it's supervillains anonymous is the is the name of the book. So okay. it's a it it takes place in a world where supervillains has ba- basically taken over. So, but I, like every time people draw me, like there's fan art or anything like that, they always draw me with red shorts. I don't know when this started or wh- like what stream I wore red shorts on, but red <laughs> shorts are like a thing. Okay. So I kind of had to be talked into like leaning into the red shorts thing for the comic as if, you know, fans would be disappointed. <laughs> Are they like if... Daisy Dukes or something? No, no, no. They're can not you, can we see what's in your pockets? Are they that tight? <laughs> no. No. Okay. But there is, I mean, we... Our, we have a bunch of fans that are weaves too that are that are into anime and manga and stuff like that this uh, the book is technically a manga so that's another super exciting thing about it is i'm kind of having to teach myself manga which manga is a lot of uh speed lines and a lot of uh really over exaggerated figures that stuff is fun as hell huh interesting yeah. okay so that's a whole other design language then yes the yeah okay yes that I'm lear- that I have been learning all along, but yeah. So it, it is, is a superhero comic, though. Super villain, hero villain. It is a superhero comic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's this whole uh, kind of a culture that y- you guys have, uh-huh. like uh, trailing behind you, or popping up behind you, guiding you along. And there, there's this um, rumor. I haven't delved too deep into it, but there's this A team and S team, or is it O team or S team? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Could you help us understand what, yes. how, how that came about? What's eight, that? eight. Well, I don't even really know how it came about. I mean, it probably came about on some stream. It's just an offhanded comment, but uh, this, a, I am a team. A team is our Adam fans and S class are Sitch fans. And it's just that it doesn't go any deeper than that. Uh, so you are a team. Yes. Yeah. You you know this from looking at our comic campaign, right? That's why you were like, "There's an S class cover and there's an A team cover." Is that how you know about S class and A team? Well, I I hear about it on on Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> is, tell me if my audio is okay, guys. Uh, so uh, yeah. So it's this it's this tug of war. But you you're supposed to be the entire team, or is your team rallied around you? Are you like some sort of multiple personality? Like you got a bunch of sock puppet accounts and you guys do like transcontinental war? No, there is a lot of dunking on each other though. Obviously S class and a team do dunk on each other. Okay. But it's all in, it's great because it's all in good fun, especially I know this is obviously where we have some crossover and I know we share a lot of audience because (laughs) yeah. Well, do you call yourself an enlightened centrist? I'm curious. Uh, no, I, I okay. don't, uh, I, I don't use the word enlightened for myself. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I think of myself as a coquettish centrist. I don't even know what coquettish means. What you is... don't know what cockatry means? Cockatry? Uh-uh. Cockatry. Uh-uh. It, it just flirtatious, I guess. So you're flirting with centrism? You're not a, no, I, I am, I am, as a I am, I'm like, I, I'm like a pylon in the middle of the road or a divider mm-hmm. in the middle of the road with like this fragrant, fragrant bouquet that's mm-hmm. distracting the drivers and their, you know, their gender journeys or whatever. Are you a, are there. you a centrist? I'm, ben, are you a centrist or a, <laughs> Wait, do can, people can you, know what, do people know what your political designation do, is? Do, do people know what centrist means? Can you define centrist? Uh, we did. And this is, we just got in. Uh, a back and forth with another YouTuber named Academic Agent, and he Ooh. made a video dunking on us. Is he going to make it into your comic book? No, definitely not. No. Oh, okay. There will be no Academic Agent mentions. It sounds like a super villain. The yeah, totally. Um, we call him Quackademic Agent. <laughs> <laughs> the Quackademic Agent. <laughs> so, uh, Quackademic Agent made a video dunking on centrist and it's like 10 10 debating tactic 10 dishonest debating tactics that centrists do i know it's great okay 
And uh, sounds like a rigorous kind of academic he, thing that he does. But he didn't even define us in the way that we define centrist. Like on our show, we constantly talk about centrism and what centrism means. He's there's a lot of people conflate centrist and moderates. I make the distinction between centrist and moderates because hmm. all centrist is is someone that has political positions that fall on both sides of the traditional left-right divide. So the clearest example is if you're pro-gun and pro-abortion or pro-choice, rather, I think is the politically correct way to say it. But if you're pro-gun and pro-choice, you're technically a centrist. But those positions, you can have extreme positions and be a centrist. So also, if you're the opposite of that, if you're anti-abortion and anti-gun, you're also a centrist, but you have the diametrically opposite position. Okay, so, so, so to say like, like cancel themselves out according to what perspective though? I mean, what makes something anti-gun right wing and anti-abortion left wing or pro abortion? Well, I yeah, that's wing, right? that's where a lot of centrists actually they they think that the left right uh paradigm is is like outdated because of that. Yeah, why is why is uh, pro gun traditionally on the right spectrum. Yeah. So, do do you adhere to the um, political compass memes, the four quadrant thing that's divided no, authoritarian, libertarian, and uh, no, nah, can't that. stand it. Yeah. No, no, and not yeah. just even the memes, but just that quadrant. That thing was obviously cooked up by like liberal progressives. It's oh. so obvious because they have libertarian and. Like libertarian is obviously good, right? Liberty. Who wants? Who disagrees with liber liberty? And then authoritarian on the top. It, they might as well say good on the bottom and bad on the top. Hmm. Interesting. How okay. is that? Why well, I, I I conceptualize the left right political spectrum in anarchy on the left and tyranny on the right, like oppress oppression on the right. Uh, okay. you know, Which like is North, just another North, way of saying uh, authoritarians and libertarians. It's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Same concept. Uh, well, no, because I think anarchy is, you know, complete lawlessness. And uh, the on tyranny, the right, on the right, yeah, you have tyranny. We're thinking like 1984, like complete state-run society. Yeah. So... Liberty would be before you reach anarchy and like you're, you're, uh, you're striking for order in the middle. The balance point should be in the middle. Yeah. That's okay. another point of centrism. How, how is, how is, uh, how is pure Liberty a uh, compromise between the authoritarian 1984 state and the absolutely balls to the wall escape from New York or Portland circuit 2020? Um, anarchist well, you're state. on that on that political spectrum. You're really pushing towards two things that are good, but at opposite ends of the spectrum. There's security and freedom. Okay, and we want maximum security and maximum freedom, but but security uh, comes at a, the cost of freedom, and freedom comes at the cost of security. So mm -hmm. that's why you've got to you've got to balance the two you're it's you're you're forced to balance the two just by circumstance and and did uh academic uh quack academic agents? agent please ben well, get, I, I, get it's his gotta name be an correct. alliteration so quack academic <laughs> quagent or quagent <laughs> quack academic quagent it's gotta be i can't i can't violate the alliterative so you, but this is, I always conceptualize, you're a little bit blowing my mind here because I always conceptualize you as a, as a enlightened centrist because just oh. all your stuff and you're friends with, uh, I don't think Lindsay, James Lindsay has a political, I don't think Brett Weinstein, I mean, well, no, Weinstein he's is lefty. really, yeah, he's, he's yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. he's got a. He's got a, a storied collection of Birkenstocks. I'm certain of it. <laughs> well, I'm quite crunchy. certain. <laughs> but there's such things as crunchy quite conservatives. <laughs> quite. Quagently. It's so funny that when, pe that when people call Brett Weinstein a, like a 
all right conservative yeah exactly i'm like have you read his book oh my god it's not even not even close Wait, so did, did, did Ac- quackademic quagent did did he lay out like a convincing like no conception of, of what not. it is to be centrist? no of course not oh, okay. he didn't even define That's centrism i asked okay. him i asked him i'm like well how are you defining centrist because you realize it's difficult for me to say, you know, the two the two people that I laid out, the 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 pro gun and anti gun and the pro uh pro life and mm. and pro choice people who are completely different, you would you would consider those two people probably very different psychologically, right? Mm. But he's making an argument that all centrists are psychologically the same and therefore have these same kind of debate tactics. And I just I thought yeah. this is this is ridiculous. I don't okay, necessarily so know what you even, mean. Did, did, did you learn anything from that no, expose? No, no, yeah. no, no, nothing. Learn, did, you, nothing did you become more learned. self-aware of your, your tactics or your no. enlightenment? No, the oh. tactics were all bogus bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. The, the, I mean, I, it did make me think, what are the, what are the, the real debate tactics of enlightened centrists? Because I was thinking, well, one of them is like, you're not going to make your position. You're not going to establish your position based on tribalism. I think that would be number one. Hmm. Like, you're not going to say, I come to my Kyle Rittenhouse position because I am a progressive and therefore Hmm. guns are bad. So Kyle Rittenhouse is guilty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, with the Rittenhouse thing, which it's really interesting, and this is a breakdown in the nuance, Mm -hmm. um, but it's one thing, the act that happened, but there's a lot of questions that are raised around the circumstances of the act. There's a lot of uh, should, shouldn't, could, couldn't, right? So there's the self-defense part of the topic and mm-hmm. then there's the law and the, the actual laws and then the adjudication of the entire thing so that that's another uh level of it but then there's the you know the social question about um what is the use of guns and what is the use of protest and what happens when guns go wrong what happens when protests go wrong and that's where things get interesting for me i mean uh, there's the legal principle which should be pretty obvious like what's going on, but because of all the politics, it's it's fraught with tribalism. But mm-hmm. the tribalism forestalls us even getting into deeper questions. Yeah, on on like gun safety, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, gun safety, or um, I mean, the 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 way in which the entire circumstances happened around Kenosha mm-hmm. and uh, why a young man would be there and um, why those other people were there and why there was cover and narrative around mm-hmm. the entire thing. The, you know, and then that's where the tribalism snaps it all down because George Floyd protest good, um, you know, yeah. or... George White supremacist Floyd, bad, uh, protest bad. I mean, even even the from the right or or the anti rioting side, there's a lot of tribalism going on there, you know, and uh, conflating or overinflating the amount of violence because we're pushing back against CNN's narrative and Michelle Obama's narrative of it being mostly peaceful, and we can. It's hard to even call bullshit because that mm. that that's when you start getting into. Aside, because you're calling bullshit on someone. Well, I do. I think, especially in the Kenosha situation, I don't think we should over-exaggerate the amount of violence and and property destruction taking place. But at the same time, I do think any amount of violence or property destruction taking place is unacceptable, completely unacceptable. So, Mm -hmm. and I just, I fall... Uh, Democrats and 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 progressives for not coming out and saying that explicitly. But you've got a rash of books being written like it's okay to riot and rioting is good and rioting is how we get yeah. social change. Yeah, which Lo- looting for liberty. Yeah, sure <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is that a real book? It wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Uh, well, 
No, I mean, the way that, uh, uh, well, uh, shoplifting is now being taken uh, uh, or not. Um, oh, with, yeah. You know. That's another perfect example. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's that as well. So when did you start getting political? Have you always, you, you always been an artist, but were mm -hmm. you ever like engaged or did you like, uh, this politics stuff is lame. No, I have always been politically engaged my entire life. Okay. Yeah. And did you, yeah. did you hone an enlightened centrism or was were you just born from the womb, fully formed and no, uh, radiant no. of brow? No, no. I was in the liberal bubble for a long time. I was raised in California, so I was totally progressive. I used to listen to the Young Turks unironically. I used to completely buy into rep like Republicans were all mm -hmm. just racy, greedy, greedy. Racy. Yeah. Yeah. I used to buy into all that. I used to just, ex that was it, my accepted worldview. And it just mystified me. And since I was politically engaged and just a curious person, I wanted to understand like what could make somebody this strange thing called a conservative. Yeah. <laughs> like what would, why would anyone ever be this way? It seems just so antithetical to like living a, a happy existence. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was there too, but was there something really? where, yeah, yeah, I was there. I was in the liberal bubble. I mean, it was like, oh. did you listen to young Turks on ironically? I didn't know about the young Turks. It was, <laughs> he doesn't want to say, no, no, I, I, I you know, it, I, it wasn't until Gamergate that I, uh, I started seeing I really mean, infamous Gamergate, like in 2014 or so. Yeah. yeah so you were following Gamergate. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I was heavily invested in Reddit. Right. Okay. And then I was in Portland and I was in Olympia and, you know, I'm kind of like all, everybody that I know is pretty democratish, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And, for, uh, for Portland. Come on. Yeah. Portland, Oregon. There's like Portland, five Oregon. Republicans in Portland. And I would mock them, you know, and the Bush <laughs> era came, you know, and like, uh, well, I remember, I remember like mocking somebody driving around with a McCain Palin bumper sticker because <laughs> Palin was such a joke. That's hilarious. So I, I admit she was pretty hot, you know, but that, that's other issues going on there. But, um, <laughs> you know, but then, but then I go to Evergreen and I'm like, wait, there, there's some sort of funk underneath all this stuff and, and then yada, yada, yada. But what, what was, what was like the first thing where you're like, you, you thinking, why would somebody want to be a conservative? But then you start to actually engage with that question. The, the book that got me out of my bubble was Jonathan Heights, the righteous mind. Until I read that book, I was, I was completely mystified. When yeah. was that? And, and how long 2012. did you cry in the shower? Whoa, 2012. 2012. Okay. Oh, I didn't cry in the shower at all. I was like, oh my God. It was very much like an epiphany. And I have always been, this is one of the things that it was the, one of the first, one of my first realizations of just how hypocritical people on the left could be. Because I fancied myself running with the, like the pro science crowd. Like, you know, uh, Richard Dawkins had famously given that talk where he talks about some some older scientist who had gotten something wrong his entire career and how once he got new information, he updated his thinking on this and, you know, made a proud declaration to the entire scientific community that he had been wrong his entire life. And now I am so thankful, dear sir, that you can correct me. And then I no longer have to suffer this indignity of not uh, of not knowing the truth. And I thought that this is my crowd. You know, as soon as they get, as soon as they get the memo from Jonathan Haidt, as soon as they, as soon as they see this amazing argument that he has laid out, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to change their minds. They they're going to see the errors of their ways and how wrong I was, man. How wrong I was. That's when I, that's when I realized everyone else is just playing a game of tribalism uh, this is 2012 mm -hmm. yeah could you bring 20, us back to the magical world 2012. of 2012 and this is probably somewhere in california but what's yes. going on uh, well wait obama was elected in tw term. in 2008 right yeah. and then he was re-elected in 2012 right he ran against romney yeah yeah he ran against romney yeah, yeah. 
you know, I don't know that there's any really significant markers in my life, but I did, I did stop seeing conservatives as, you know, others. I started to understand them and really respect their perspective. Hmm. I got a lot of respect for, for people's perspective after that. Did you, did you engage with that respect? Like actively like go, go to a, I don't, where do they, where do they, those conservatives? Not really, not meet? really. Like, uh, they don't not go to really. pool halls, right? Where do, where do they go in California? I the guess. Beef just, ranches or something? Yeah. I Just the online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But I mean, I do, it's in California though. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like I was, I was running deadline junkies, the writer's lab that I started and there were like maybe two guys in there that were actually conservative. And I always look at like, before I read that, I always just thought, oh, they're, you know, we have to respect them. You know, we know them. Because you're the obviously. tolerant party. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, you could tell people never really respected that perspective. And I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of people still in deadline junkies who probably look at me like I'm some crazy right winger now, which is, Hmm. which is totally insane but hmm. did you yeah. did you who was your first conservative post height friend well i have always had conservative friends but i just okay. didn't i was like always trying to convert them to the to the righteous path like and after you, that i after that i really just gave up on trying to convert people to okay. my political perspective because i realized how like first of all i had this political perspective that I had spent my entire life trying to convert people over to and no one ever converted over to it. And Mm. also, also it really was just, I mean, it's so much bullshit from myself that I could just immediately see, okay, it's just me Mm. trying to stroke my own ego. Mm. Like if I was that wrong about my political perspective, who am I to even try to uh, win people over to my political perspective? Did you go into like a a political tailspin? Did you 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 didn't have that political meaning making machine of judgment and conversion to guide you? What happened? Did you? Well, I've I've machine? always I've always had my art and I've always had okay. writing and so I mean I um I used it more to just become a better writer. Like once I realized once I figured it out, I was like, oh man, I can run circles around these other writers because they hmm. they don't get it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you maintained your pride. This is, I don't know if you know about like comic skate or anything like that about, uh, comic skate is post Gamergate, but it's comic skate is post Gamergate, but I feel like comic skate made successes that Gamergate wanted to achieve and never really did. Well, it's hard to make a game. It's easier to make a comic. It is. That's a huge part of it. But also there's the storytelling aspect of it, which Gamergate, I mean, Gamergate was kind of fixated on just like TNA and video games. They weren't fixated on storytelling as much, but I guess, I guess they do. They do. There is storytelling in video games. So there, I'm sure feminists will harp on, you know, non-inclusive storytelling or whatever, but the but comic skate was a whole other, were the, were the attacks from the SJWs, if that's the proper term against mm-hmm. the comic, uh, realm decidedly or quantitatively or qualifiably different than their attacks in the gamer gate no uh, totally exactly the same so same thing but they weren't like they were still talking about tna and representation and they're boiling down the entire all yes all of the all of the progressive all of the progressive uh goals of of the left were that were aimed at Gamergate were also aimed at Comicsgate. But the old, the reason really that I bring it up is because I think that like bad storytelling is a byproduct of the fact that a lot of the s- storytelling industry is run by progressives who don't understand a broad moral palette. And all of all of storytelling, all of good storytelling is about morality. It's about right and wrong. It's about good and bad behavior. It's about, do, uh, you know, it's about loyalty and friendship and, and you know, authority and, and subversion and, 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 and yes, and jealousy all those and, things. Yeah. yeah. 
All, all storytelling is about morality. And if you are a progressive and you have no understanding of, of morality, like you, you, you can't see any value in hierarchy. You're not going to be a good storyteller. You're just not going to be a good storyteller. Well, could you, could you help me with this? I, there's a lot to talk about with regards to hierarchy, but I don't know why they don't like hierarchy because they mm -hmm. just recreate it. I, it just, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. Like, what's the deal with hi why hierarchy? They, there's, there's, I believe there's two reasons why people don't like hierarchy. They're either at the bottom of the hierarchy without any hope of climbing, <laughs> which yeah. is, I mean, I pragmatically, I can, I can empathize with that. Yeah, sure. Or they are not at the top and they want to be there. There's that. Yes, that's part of it. Or they are like closer to the top and there's a lot of people under them. They feel bad about those people having to be down there because it's so great to be at the top of the hierarchy. Mm. So it's a, it's a guilt complex thing. Well, isn't there, yeah. I don't know, there's just trade-offs. This is the thing. This is the one thing that is missing from most political discourse. It's the, just the notion of trade-offs, the notion of costs, and the notion of compromise. And in these ideological echo chambers, it's really easy to just not think about that. Like, do we want to end all abortion? Does that not tread upon other values that are... Uh, more necessary for us. I'm just thinking in terms of a conservative Christian, like they have to do a moral calculus about, do they want the state to be the ones mm. to dictate these things? And what will they give up in return for that? You know, and, and there's, there's cost benefit, you know, saving Pe some children's lives, but what, what else is going to happen in that pursuit? People on the left, are you talking about? Or? I was just, I was just making up a very basic example of, a hard pro-life stance that oh, okay. um, would have the government outlaw um, abortion uh, by fiat. And uh -huh. there, there's just a lot of complexity there. Um, I was a tad distracted because someone in your comment section said, why don't you ever acknowledge the super chats? And I think I was giving you a hard time oh, about that, Ben. Do you not even have your chat up? No, it's right here. Steel Sorry. wrath for $10. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on. I feel hold on. I feel bad, but that's fine. People want to participate in the conversation. I know. So I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. <laughs> the buttery anvil super chat two dollars. Thanks, buddy. Uh, tell Adam I said hi. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? Uh, I think it was butter anvil. Uh, the butter anvil. Well, the butter anvil is just a regular in our chat. So okay. I don't I don't read the super chats unless I am uh, the only one on screen because I'm I think focusing I, more on the conversation than I am I think, on the I know, I know, I know, I know. Ben, I've been you following multi, you. You got Sorry, a one more. Task. Shut up. <laughs> Steel Wrath said super chat ten dollars. Ben, I've been following you for a few years now and just found Adam and Sitch. Oh. You got a new follow there. Glad yeah. to see more voices of reason coming together. Yes. See, that's why I thought you were an enlightened centrist, Ben. That's why I thought you were an enlightened centrist. <laughs> what does that even mean? Okay. So I'm like, I'm a hodgepodge. Okay. So I understand centrism is just like, you're like, you're like this motley kind of grab bag of, of ideas and opinions that, mm -hmm. that are spread across a variety of different domains. No, wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. A grab bag. Listen, Ben, are you, are you selecting your opinion? Uh, political opinions at random i hope not oh, okay but but i have i have a, i have a broader spread than 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 would fit easily into these a grab bag motley grab bag. okay so anyways a grab bag one, one well, i hate what, tribalism you, two a team want... is supreme super chat two dollars california mr tickle trunk yeah mr tickle trunk's awesome yeah the so you uh but what is enlightenment i just once we get over like berating me for for the centrism it, thing what is enlight this enlightenment enlightenment thing? is just like a hyperbolic way to say it some <laughs> some pe some people like radical centrist which i think is good too because not enough people realize centrists can be radicals it, uh, but, but what does that mean like hard hardcore or like things what is it's, radical it's mean? it is What's the ultimate mean? It is the ultimate irony because it is the 
it is the untribal tribe. It is the, you know, mm. the, it's just the, really hard the team of to individualists. Be it is super hard. Yes. It is super hard to be. Un- that is why you need a little bit of tribal peer pressure to pressure you to be anti-tribal. Yeah. 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 It Hurting works cats. good that way. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to let this get away because I'm curious, how do you, how do you select your political positions? Are you selecting at random? Maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> it's, I got, I got, I got the, all, I got all these positions over the there. The dartboard. And I got a bunch of like suction cup dildos right here. And every morning I wake <laughs> up and I throw a flu. <laughs> like, what's my, what, what does a dildo say my position on abortion is? <laughs> do, do, in all seriousness, though, you, you, you select your, you, I'm assuming you try to select your opinions based on whatever the, like the evidence is, right? The facts. Okay. Evidence. Facts. Um, yeah. That That's okay. There's the evidence and the facts, right? And then there's the morality, which you can't devi- mm. derive from the evidence of the facts. There's what to do with the evidence. Maybe the you can. I don't know. I've, Maybe. I don't know. Are you a moral realist? Or a... I did. I did one of those like 16, 16 vector political mm. things. Like one mm. of the, like the, the, the biggest one. And I was in the middle through all the different vectors. I was oh, like a little good, bit this, a yeah, little bit that, a little bit that. Cause, cause I can see, I can kind of see both sides i can kind of see both sides but i know that both side ism is, is, is oh i know is the sarlacc pit of uh, of opinionated people you know i hate saying both sides yeah you both sides. yeah Pe- and people it's kind of a meme to say oh both sides both sides. well i can yeah. see both sides or i can plausibly hold like I can, I can attain or I try to attain understanding of why somebody would believe that way and why somebody would believe another way. And centrism for me is having a light government um, with enough of a safety net for um, people who are in need. And mm-hmm. um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that uh, with more uh, of these moral uh, questions or these uh, cultural questions, it, the cultural questions can't be. S- solved through policy. Mm-hmm. Policy is ultimately the, the working out of cultural questions and those questioning and the process of, of speaking through the policy and the process of it gathering. De- I mean, it depends upon the cultural yeah. question, though. I think maybe you could work it out through policy. Like, uh, like did you have an example at hand? Uh, it depends upon the cultural question. I mean, if you're talking about, like, I wouldn't be for a state-mandated religion, but I do think that state mandated vaccines aren't a religion i'm kidding I'm yeah kidding. well no i but i understand and this this drives a lot of uh you know hard anti-theist crazy but i understand mm. why uh churches get a tax exemption because church ex, uh churches are supposed to be you know there's there's they've taken the position where they're going to you know help the poor and needy a lot of hospitals are started by catholic churches so Mm -hmm. i understand the the purpose of giving them a tax exemption but tax exemption for churches is a a, a public policy so Mm -hmm. that is a way of dealing with a cultural issue of you know taking care of the poor and needy right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so state um, supported religion in the negative, like the negative uh, exemption is not uh, the state bolstering religion itself, but it's allowing for religions to do certain activities that would yeah. cause a greater benefit to society. Because It's encouraging it rather than coming out and saying, okay, we're going to have a state mandated religion. Like England has the church of England. Like that's state sanctioned religion. Basically. Uh, yeah. But England's got a, like a queen of England too. So it's, they're all yeah. kind of weird. They do all kinds of weird stuff. Kind of weird I agree. Right um. So the the theism atheism. Look how thing, many you super chats you got? Oh my well, god! Well, once you brought it up, you, they're you're really good. They're at just that. coming in. Should I say it? James Lindsay is the alias of Dexter Morgan in the new Dexter series. Was someone in the writers' room based? Thoughts. You I know Dexter. That one. Where'd you get that one? Do you know Dexter uh, Dexter Morgan I, from? Uh, the hit the Showtime, tv series no cheesy kind of 
Uh, it did. It was super popular though, so I was under the impression it's got to be good. It's pretty good. It, 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 yeah, it's got squishy parts. It's okay. Uh, and I've been, he's it's a, been a serial while. killer of serial killers, yes, right? Yes. That's and can't go he, wrong with that. He's That's got a great like this idea. this identity because he runs away from from Florida and being married to his sister or something like that. But he's actually married to his sister in real life. The actor mm-hmm. is, anyways, it's not not his sister. Anyways, it's weird. But um. He goes into the woods, and then he, he has this other identity, and then it turns out that his identity is named James Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it? No way. That's what it, yeah. No it way. It was in the trailer. No way. It was in the trailer. Really? Yeah. That's pretty badass. I'm sure James was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he's the killer of your mom. Uh, so do, do you think that somebody's based, or was that completely random? Who knows, right? It's or hard to say. It really is. You, well, was you, it that was it that way in the TV series, and it it changed in the movie? Is that the situation? Uh, or? So they're doing another season after a five or ten year break. Oh, okay. So, so, so it, but James Lindsay got big in that time, so they could be based. It could. I mean, it's it's uh, likely badass. he's pretty big on Twitter. That's um, badass. Least, That's totally uh, badass. Certain people treat him like yeah. he's big on Twitter. James is cool. I DM James every once in a while, and he always responds to me, which yeah, is yeah, he's nice, really so. good at responding. Yeah. He's he's banned from Twitter right now for uh, saying "okay groomer" uh, too many times. Oh my God, that's so sad. <laughs> and I was and that was discriminatory against uh, sexual orientation. I grooming. listened to all of his all of his new discourse podcasts. I'm sure you probably do too. The I was trying to get him to read the Dictator's Handbook and look into selectorate theory because I just I it's such a what's that selectorate theory i've done a video on it i'll share it with you after the after okay. the stream but it's it's this idea of uh coalition building to win elections okay and it just so much of the stuff that's going on can be seen through uh both james's lens and the lens of selectorate theory and i think both enhance uh so intersection understanding selectorate theory or anti Well, no, selector theory is just the idea of in order to win elections, you have to build a, what selector theory calls a winning coalition. And you have to build that coalition out of different players in, in, uh, in the political realm. So obviously the whole, I like there's a couple of, there's a few different rules that selector theory lays out as far as like the first one is no man rules alone. Like the idea, a lot of people have this idea that, you know, you know, shadowy figures are controlling, pulling the puppet strings of everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's not really the world we live in. The world we live in is a bunch of people struggling to, to gain prominence in a hierarchy. Mm. So there we go again. Yeah. So, uh, selector theory, looks at what these different players and i always think of it whenever uh you know james is talking about critical race theory and stuff like that and the goals of critical race theory it really is about building coalitions for the democratic party (laughs) i mean Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can reduce it down to to party politics relatively easily yeah but it's spinning around uh spinning around a certain circle like uh righteous mind talks about like the Mm. the morality binds and blinds and like yeah. this vector right uh, this vector of uh, positive negative and the circling of a certain yes. ideology i can see within the critical race theory or the critical theory and the way that the democratic elites have bound themselves up to the underclasses through this oppression oppressed dynamic or in uh, you know in, uh, ostensibly to overthrow the system but actually the system is is feeding off of that overthrowing of the system as we see a- an actual um actually unfolding but is there a coalition building that Mm. is based around something other than that and what would that be what would be the thing to begin to dance around in this enlightened centrist that's that you know that's an interesting idea i never really thought of that because it would be interesting to try to supplant the the critical race theory coalition with a better coalition a less toxic coalition like i don't the, the, the freedom party or the the american civil religion kind of thing yeah well we're definitely talking about like american civil religion 
Yeah. I mean, can we can we can we do like a patriot party or something like that? Is that possible? Is that vomitous no, for your get any aesthetics? Le- you're not going to get any yeah. lefties on the page. I, isn't there already a patriot party? I think there is. Well, I, but but like a notion of a civil duty and responsibility and uh, you know, pitching in for the common good of America. I mean, do you mm-hmm. think that that's aesthetically possible, or is it to own no. it as a dog whistle? Or that's one or of the that's one of the problems. This is the problem of critical race theory because critical race theory views America as unacceptable. So anything remote, like they 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 are talking about, like the judge in the Kyle Rittenhouse case has a flag in his in his courtroom. So therefore. That's yeah. too triggering well, he, for him. Yet God bless the America as his ringtone, which is I a know. Trump dog dog whistle. Yeah, no, the left hates America now, which well, is yeah, crazy. But, uh, how how is that sustainable? And and are they not paying for that? Are the Democrats not paying for the left? Increasingly, yes. yeah. Hugely, so there's got to yeah. be a positive thing that that we can rally around. That's not just anti woke or anti CRT. There's got to be like an enlightened oh, or like positive that. spin to the I centrism like yeah. or the secu- sector, sectorationism, mm. sector, sectorate, S- the uh, grand sectorate. Does this sectorate theory do? Does he secular. propose like That's a, a word you're looking for? A, a popular or a, 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 a positive rallying point for all these different sections? Well, centrists are not a good. Centrists are not a good. Well, there's just the centrists are all different, though. That's why I don't think you can really count. You centrists can't. are generally the kingmaker in elections. Okay, okay. So what does that mean then? How how are we persuaded? How can we persuade ourselves to make better choices? Uh, hmm. who uh, who's we ourselves? Centrists. Like, centrists. To make if better the, choices, I don't yeah, know. If, they, if, if they're the if they're the kingmakers, then should well, they no, not? In in my thinking, in democratics, in a democratic election, centrists are the ones that will vote either party. So they weigh okay. all all the things going on in the environment, like uh, the. Did you watch a debate with James Lindsay and? And um, oh, I'm spacing out. It's Jesse Single, where they debated oh, over "Make America Weinstein. Great Again," <laughs> like with Weinstein. That's when, yeah, with Weinstein, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and James came out in favor of voting for Trump, and and uh, Single was voting for Biden. Yeah. Do see this makes me think Lindsay's a centrist because Lindsay is willing to vote Republican or Democrat depending upon like the he weighed. Theory. He weighed the entire political uh, situation and said, you know, Trump is the right choice because he felt critical race theory was such a toxic Hmm. uh, thing in our current cultural environment that Hmm. we had to do everything to fight against it. I mean, we we made that. We were all making that. Was it well? Yeah, but uh, now that Biden's there, uh, they don't have Trump anymore. I mean, they keep on resurrecting Trump to push him down. I mean, the the, the left and the CNN, uh, yeah, entities and stuff like that. But they were they were making it impossible for the society to operate because they hated Trump so much. It mm-hmm. seems like to me that we couldn't have lasted another four years under Trump because of the way that he was being used. To make discourse impossible. Yes, that was Sitch's argument. That's why Sitch voted for Biden, right? There. Oh, he actually voted for Biden. Yeah. Oh. Sitch, Sitch, and I, Sitch was in on that debate. I mean, we were have the same debate that Lindsay and oh. and Single had. Was that in the chat? I didn't see that part. No, no, no. We just had it on our show all okay. the time. We, Who was your Brett like, Weinstein d- during the election? No, we never. <laughs> We don't need a Brett Weinstein. We just beat each other up. This is the whole origin of A team and S class. We just always beat each other up. That's it. Yeah, we box. This is why people like our show because we're not afraid to box. No, no and we're no. not afraid. Sis just made an incredibly insane take. I just, I can't. I'm still reeling from how terrible it is. What did he say? He wanted to. He wanted to conscript 
18 to 20 year olds for two years of service in the military or some government job. Are you in favor of that? Uh, it depends on if the government and the military are woke or not. If they're not woke. Uh, see? And- yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. They're going to be woke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, doing public service would be great. Talk about infrastructure. Biden's army. <laughs> Camilla's Biden, army. Well, yeah. The, the little Biden bots going, going, going ashore to Cuba. I can't imagine that. In their cars or something like that. I mean, I, it, it's plausible, but I think we're, we're so far from a place where we can trust the government to make the right <laughs> decisions with our 18 to 20 year olds, but would it make better decisions than they're making for themselves? That's still an open question. 18 to 20 year olds. Yeah. Are they, are they not in need of some sort of public service? I mean, if we had enshrined into our education system, a notion of, of civics as something that you're responsible for and that you pitch in for, I think that that would uh, make people more responsible with regards to property loss and damage and, and, and figuring out solutions to injustices that don't involve massive amounts of state or at least state media sanctioned violence. Aren't they supposed to be learning that in school though? They're not learning. Anything. So you're going to, so wait, so the one, so the one government institution has broken down where they're supposed to be learning at public school. Yep. So you're going to construct this new government institution where they're supposed to learn it. How do you know they're not going to be, it's not going to be even worse. Well, okay. The, the, the question is what do we do with the 18 to 20 year olds? Do we just let them play world of Warcraft? I know that's a five-year-old reference or 18, beyond 10, 18, 10 or 18 to 20 year olds. Just, uh, um, who, why is it uh, Put the, our go, job have to them assign? go to college? I mean, if we're well, going to talk about society, okay, a lot yeah, of them do, a lot of them do join the military. I just, I think people should, hmm. I think people should, uh, do what's right for them. And the idea oh. that there's like a one size fits all policy okay. that everyone should do. I just, I'm completely against. I okay. Just, is there anything that you want everyone to do? Besides, everyone? subscribe to your YouTube channel. It's linked in the description. <laughs> I don't even really want everyone to do that. <laughs> I, don't I don't want know. that either. <laughs> people do people do their I know it'd be such a uh the such um <laughs> I I I kind of like the fact that there are a lot of there's a wide variety of people with a wide variety of opinions and interests and and I think that's what makes society strong. I don't put it making everybody the same i don't think is good or or saying anything will like one policy is going to work for everyone just seems completely wrong to me well so let's say that there's this place called china and this place called russia and this place called america and china's got a 50-year plan and they're sticking Mm -hmm. to it and they're gonna they're gonna do this 50-year plan from the top down they're gonna do it Russia's got a 10 or 15 year plan and there's more coercion, but not as much coercion as China. And America's got like at most a four year plan, at maybe a two year plan with regards yeah. to our elections. Over time, are we not just kind of rolling the dice that America's going to be able to keep up with China and Russia while Russia's shooting rockets out of the sky and China's got these new kind of supersonic weapons because they have the state pressing their citizens into dominance? This is a fascinating question that I wrestle with often. Do you cry in the shower about it? it? What's that? Do you cry in the shower about this? No, I don't cry over it, but I do. The the race with China, I think, is fascinating. And, And like philosophically, I don't think there's any way China can can win this race without cheating but the the way that we're structured now with technology china is in a position to continually cheat so i i think that Mm -hmm. in order to have the kind of technological development that facilitates a thriving economy that can produce the kind of things that you're talking about, the things that will make China dominant over the United States. I think in order to have those things, you have to have a free society that China doesn't have. Hmm. So I don't think China in uh, internally can develop the kind of uh, 
technology and innovation that will let them be superior to us, but they can steal innovation from us, which is the reason why China is even a competitor at mm. this juncture is because we have not, we have been so freewheeling with our, with our production and, and uh, chips innovation yeah. and manufacturing that China is basically profiting from stealing innovation from American entrepreneurs. So you're if okay that with stops, a government so, that stops, if that stops things though, like that. Okay. Like if that things, stops, yeah. China, China's development stops. Uh, very, they very might have quickly. enough to just, I think we might've created enough for them to and, control all their citizens. And that's what, well, well, <laughs> And controlling, and buy up Africa and... controlling the citizens is not is not what I worry about because that's just that turns them into North Korea, which makes it a stagnant. Hmm. Okay, uh, which we will just out innovate. Like we're gonna have, uh, you know, we're gonna be texting with one another via our thoughts. Well, they are stagnated in a unless unless uh, we unless they steal that technology from us or we share that technology with them. Okay. So with regards to innovation, there's two things. One way that innovation will not conquer a completely dedicated top-down authoritarian state that's less innovative or that steals the innovation is if the innovative society being the United States loses all discipline or invests its innovation into absolute baloney. Mm -hmm. such as uh, body modification and, and uh, all these spirit, pseudo spiritual social justice religions that are popping up. So well, I don't know if it's, I don't know that you can tell it's baloney until after you've tried it. Okay. How many, how many tits do you have? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know where you're going, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just going, what do you mean? I mean, I was saying if, if we look at social justice mm -hmm. uh, or critical theory, uh, at large as innovation, as, as our uh, institutes of a academia producing mm -hmm. all this innovation, but the, all the innovation is baloney. Mm -hmm. And plus it's infecting young minds to care about th these nefarious ideals that don't actually translate into actual innovation that China would want to steal. Actually, like China is actively suppressing certain sexual mores that mm -hmm. America's embracing, such as the sissy male. They, they're banning sissy males from their television. Well, I don't know where, I don't know where the conversation goes with the gender stuff. Cause I, I mean, I don't necessarily know how that would be uh, some technology that was useful. And no, that's exactly what I'm saying is that gender, uh, young people are pouring hours upon hours of innovative imaginative time into this completely non-productive activity maybe it's gender non productive so, so, I, all, all i'm saying is okay. listen 20 okay. 30 years ago people thought video games were non-productive waste of time the uh, you know total oh. you know on on something that will never be useful something that was is a total like uh waste this of is energy novel. i haven't yeah. thought about this but okay. now like i can't imagine us being where we are technologically without video games so i don't know you don't necessarily know because all mm. this gender stuff which seems completely bizarre to me and i like i'm not if i had to bet money on it i would not bet money like i think this is a dead end too like i don't okay. think it's going to turn out to be as profitable and and useful in developing new technologies as video games has been. But I mean, maybe they'll pull a rabbit out of the hat. I don't know. Or the consequence of that will be a uh, reorientation towards more uh, material focused or productive activities rather than uh, being lost in your head. What are minute. productive activities? Well, uh, if, we're, if we're talking in terms of China versus the United States, productive activities would be uh, production and mm -hmm. innovation that capitalizes somehow on human ingenuity and allows for people to be even more productive with mm -hmm. their time or, or other people productive of their I think that's time. I think we have so much technology working on that making people more individually productive and also I think I mean, and we Sitch and I argue about this on the show all the time because 
I don't. I just don't think Sitch is up to speed on how how much how many like very quick gains we're making in robotics. I think a lot of manual labor will be done by robots in in like 20, yeah. 20 years tops. Uh, trucking. Can you? And... I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, I wonder if the future will be. We're going to basically go back to a slave model, but the slave will be the robot and everybody will save up to buy a robot that will do their job for them. It's yeah. like I, as a plumber, I don't actually do any plumbing, but I do own a, a plumbing robot that I, okay. that people that I manage that goes out to your house and fixes your plumbing. Okay. Well, okay. This is a, this is a tried and true science fiction trope. Or, or thought experiment. But I don't so think we we're that, that far. I don't think it's that far away, to be honest. Okay, you. so the singularity, what's the fallout of the singularity? What we, what do we do? Do we just live in our pods and and everybody else learns skills for us or we don't learn anything? We don't do anything? We just talk to each other? What do you mean? What, what do you mean by the term singularity? Uh, where technology reaches a point where it just produces itself mm -hmm. and then just supports human humankind. Yeah. It's Ge all general, it all general AI, I think, is where the singularity happens. Have you read Ray Kurzweil and and the Kurzweil. like Aubrey de Grey, those guys who are the Ray Kurzweil is the one that came up with the term the singularity. Okay, was I using? He wrote, he wrote a book called The Singularity Is Near. He wrote a book called uh, yeah, that. Spiritual Machines. Yeah, which I fucking so love. what what happens when when it's just lifted off of our 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 hands and our fingers and our feet. What are we going to do? Where are we going to find meaning or purpose without productivity? Well, we will find, pro but the productivity, like I'm still going to work on a comic. I'm still going to like write yeah. stories with Sitch. You're still going to work on creative endeavors. You just have more time to do that. I mean, we could, we could easily go down to a, like a three day work week. I don't see why we couldn't like, okay. why is, why is five or why is five days a week? The gold number. I well, like two I, days a week. It, 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 that that's as as an employee. But if you want to build something yourself, if you want to build a pizza shop that's the best pizza shop in town, you're probably not going to rely on robots to do that, or you're going to have to front a whole bunch of effort to get the right robots to do the right things. But if if your if your creative endeavor is cooking food and that's completely managed by machines, mm -hmm. if your creative endeavor is shuffling children from their homes to school in a school bus, and then that's taken away from you. Like, 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 like there's all these opportunities towards growth and fulfillment in productivity in these menial tasks. That I being said, think, I don't want to I do disagree. the menial tasks, but yeah, I don't, I think school bus drivers can find meaning doing something else. Maybe, you know, tutoring kids if they really like, you know, being around just, kids. I'd rather just tell them to shut up. That's, 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 that's just what I want to do. You're anyway. way behind on your super chats. Ben. No, you have to I've read been putting them chats. onto the screen. Oh, okay. Michelle, so Michelle Nafe. <laughs> thanks, Michelle, for for swinging by. Paul Vanderclay is in the audience. I did want to. Is he really? What's up, Paul? Have you guys had Paul on, or have you been? On We've Paul had Paul on our Sunday show. Oh, Hell yeah! Great. Paul, well, on Sunday, and I've done I've done a couple of live streams with Paul. Yeah, Paul Paul's and I go round and round. Paul, I'm I'm a moral realist. Okay. Okay, what does that mean? Paul, what, what's Paul, real about morality? Paul, a moral realist believes in moral facts. Believes that morality can there morality can be quantified in a scientific way, in a factual way. Okay. Yeah. What's a fact then? That it's so a powerful that it fact? can dictate your morality. Well, a fact. Yeah. It's how, uh, something measurable. Okay. Some, and, something and how do you a, know something that with a truth value? Something that can that truth. Okay. Yeah, has a so, truth value. So you not kicking your cat has a mm -hmm. truth value to it, not a moral value. Or you can derive a morality from you kicking or not kicking your cat. Yeah, I would say not kicking the cat is definitely factually correct as a moral statement. Okay, what, what I can't makes think that of any situation correct. where kicking a cat would be good. What if it's clawing up your f your leg? Mm -hmm. 
or it's clawing your girlfriend's face or wife's face sorry your fiance's face uh, your special lady friend's well you face. make an excellent argument for why you should, <laughs> why you should do something about that cat <laughs> depends upon what it depends upon how mean the cat is is that what you're saying i don't know i just think i think uh like uh, fact-based morality is just another way of hiding the the yourself from the fact that you are choosing what is fact and what is not fact with regards to reality yeah but There's you can set up making. you can set up contingent statements so do you do so that you when do. you're making moral choices though i think that well, we all obviously yes morality is always based on contingencies you just okay. you just landed a contingent contingency. You were like, "Yes, you shouldn't catch, uh, you shouldn't kick the cat." But here's the contingencies when you should. That's okay. exact. That's exactly what you did. I'm so just now saying, you're going to lay out all of these contingencies. Yeah, and we can wrap that up in a moral rule. That's like, yeah, you shouldn't. Uh, all law is based on contingency, and all all law is based on morality. I know people to get triggered when I say that, but but is it and where do facts? I just don't understand how uh, you derive an hut from an his. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's unless you you have a super computation machine where you can see the 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 consequences of every single act you make. We do have a super computation machine. It's called evolution. Oh, yeah. Not ooh. this is you. This is why I like Jordan Peterson. Okay. Jo Jordan Peterson talks about metaphorical truth or true enough, or he talks about uh, a evolution being the huge computational machine that tests moral facts and that different societies form different moral mm -hmm. uh, rule sets. And they're tested as these societies compete against one another for resources and members. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or amongst themselves for resources members or, or, or sure yes no okay. there can be nested moral systems within a wider moral system yes okay so evolution as this grand uh, moral mm -hmm. testing machine on what time scale is it making these decisions and when is it when does it achieve true morality this evolutionary fact-based moral machine I, you know, I don't know that it can ever, I don't know that it can ever be finished. I don't know that there's an ending point to it, hmm. but it's always like the right thing for the time. Hmm. So yeah. the, the moral this is the thing that I the, argued. This is, this is the thing. This might make it a, be a good example of it. Are you wearing is, red shorts? I just saw the peak of your, don't, don't let it, don't say anyone. <laughs> They're actually so. orange, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> the uh, this is the thing that I, the contentious dialogue that I have going with Paul Vanderclay is over whether or not the Nazis could have won the Second World War because this always seems to come up whenever you're talking about morality because if you're looking at morality from a from an evolutionary perspective, then it would be impossible for a, a moral set that was bad or something that we would just we would see as on the face of it as bad like the nazi morality being able to succeed in the world so if hitler would have won hitler would have been right no see and that's the that's the that is the I guess that's the that's the thing that people always want to say. If I if I say that the Nazis couldn't have won the war, they all all want to say, "Well, you're saying that if the Nazis did win the war, that then that morality is good." And that's not what I'm saying at all. But you're, you're, okay, so you're saying that they couldn't have what made I'm them saying a blatant. I'm to. saying a obviously evil morality could not succeed against moralities that are that are not evil okay yeah and we'll always lose to a like this is how we measure morality is the level of evilness of it or goodness okay but, but that seems to be dependent upon this state of winning so uh, eventually the good is that which wins mm -hmm. and so wins in an evolutionary sense okay uh, which there are means no more there are no more Nazis. time scales okay 
or it, it eradicates. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, don't, uh, why? It doesn't necessarily have to be huge timescales. I mean, well, it, it depends upon what you're talking about. What is a huge timescale? Like, obviously, it's not going to happen in two weeks, or mm-hmm. yeah. So we Ten are years. talking. Decades, yeah. So, so that which is evil is that which Centuries. doesn't align itself with a forward-thinking, stable. No, it's all about productive. turning resources into human beings, or human beings. Into That's resources. how evolution works. Well, human beings are resources. Okay. Wait. So wait. What? 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 What's an evil morality? It's something that turns resources into human beings. Well, I. Uh, any genocidal morality you would you would say is evil, I think. Heather tried to say that too, but I, I keep on asking why. On what basis? Why do you is say it that? evil? Yeah, why? Because it. I mean, it just is evil. It's evil because you're killing people, innocent people. I mean, it's evil on the face of it. Okay, and how do you know that? Though? You you're not arguing that. A genocidal morality is not evil, are you? No, I'm just trying to figure out. How would you make that argument? I'm curious. This is is the thing. You and Heather and Brett, you you guys are, uh, you have no appeal to anything outside of the system. So so we get to the the edge of the system Mm -hmm. and you guys just say on the face of it. It just should be obviously apparent to everybody that genocide is evil. Like, Mm -hmm. but you're just, what within the system tells you that? Like what, what, what is telling you that that's evil? Is it within the system? Is it derived from the those system? systems? Those systems become marginalized in the community of, uh, other systems and in the community of functioning systems, those systems lose members, lose status, lose adherence. They become small. They become North Korea, uh, uh in the face of Germany or, or the United States or, or listen um all those all like germany japan they were rebuilt after world war ii with a different moral system and now they're thriving populations and well china was too and they're still committing genocide i don't think china was involved in world war ii well I think they were starving during World War II, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but but I'm saying like over the course of that whole uh, century, like they they were rebuilt over the course of last century. And they're in this incredible uh, state of growth and domination that they're pursuing. And within that system, they're able to commit genocide and insulate that genocide Mm -hmm. among, uh, insofar as the Uyghurs are, are being. There's some pretty nasty things that are happening to them. But yeah. within that system, it can still support that. You're saying that's evil on the face of it, the genocide, the Uyghur genocide, which I agree I'm, with. I'm just saying that if China can get away with that and still be mm-hmm. productive, then ipso facto, that's not evil because they got away with genocide. I'm sorry. I keep on wanting to say ipso facto. I need to look that mm-hmm. up. But it, but it, it just seems... <laughs> <laughs> we use that on the show all the time. If if they can if they can get away with that, then it's not evil. Only that which is uh, evil is only that which doesn't persist. If you have a big enough system like China that can get away with genocide within its own ranks and still overcome that or even turn that into more resources for itself, then there then there's no appeal to this thing that evil uh, evil is that which loses. If something that can figure out how to be evil and win wins. So brain is giving me a hard time in the chat. Oh, uh, brain. He's saying, he's saying, of course China was involved in World War II. So I looked up China's role in World War II, but relatively few uh, remember a historical fact that underpins the ceremony. China was the first country to enter what would become the Second World War, and it was the ally of the United States and British Empire from just after Pearl Harbor in 1941 to the Japanese surrender in 1945. So China was involved in World War II. Japanese thank you, thank you, some thank you for correcting me, Brian. Really intense stuff with China. But I just, it's these conversations are tough to have, so. Okay, I, I know. I, like I, I I, wanna... I'm sorry to give you a hard time. It's just. Yeah, and I don't, well, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, it's confusing to what we're even really talking about. I mean, there's in, the in there's the intuitive understanding and then there's the. Okay. 
the factual understanding. And the thing where everyone gets their wires crossed is everyone intuitively knows right and wrong. So, but and, and according to the evolutionary theory, that mm-hmm. right and wrong is built into us because only that which knows right and wrong can persist as a human being. Only, the evolutionary system defines what is right and wrong. And what is right is defined as what helps me and my me and my society survive and and thrive into the future. So Overwatch. anything anything that helps us survive and thrive into the future is defined as good. Okay. Yeah. Such as killing somebody who's the neighboring clan because they're taking your resources. See, and that's so you wipe ex- them all out. That's exactly, <laughs> that is exactly where people immediately go. But that <laughs> is, uh, I would say that that is an incorrect view of morality. I would say that that is, that is not, that is, that may on its face appear to be the correct course of action to make you survive, but it's, it's, proven to be incorrect our our intuitions to that are incorrect like many of our intuitions well what if human beings only think that because we eradicated every competi- competing homo sapiens or hominid in order to secure our our future well-being so we already committed all this genocide mm-hmm. and we can we therefore won because we did that. If we wiped out the Neanderthals and screwed a few of them, but wiped out Neanderthals in order to populate Europe, then we would think that it would be erased from our memory that we did that because there would be no counterfactual around. That we Right, but there could be a counterfactual. Suppose uh, Neanderthals weren't wiped out and they formed a society that was as thriving as... Uh, homo sapiens developed and we have two societies uh, functioning side by side who knows how further along technologically we'd be oh, okay so wiping them out could have been a gigantic mistake and we'd never know okay so it's it's better not to commit genocide because you don't know what that other uh type of human it being is, might produce for ben you. i don't know I don't know. They, I don't know why they didn't teach you this at Evergreen. Okay, you should never, ever, ever commit genocide. Okay, why though? Genocide I mean, like, what are you appealing to? Like, genocide some sort of, like, on based. its face is evil. Okay. And this is this is the value of having a religious perspective, because yeah. it's a lot easier to say, Ben, God will be very angry with you if you commit a genocide. Okay. God will hate your guts and he will torture you for all eternity. That's an, that's a very easy thing for me to say and for you to understand. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? God will torture you for all eternity. That's the reason you shouldn't commit genocide. Does it seem crystal clear? Is it black and white enough for you? Because God said. Because okay. God Not, said no, so. so. So we're moving from Adam said it's wrong to God said it's wrong. And that's supposed to convince me. Well, every single religion, I believe, says genocide. God says genocide is bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> have you read the Old Testament, dude? <laughs> I, I. Do you, do you know what happened in Canaan? <laughs> well, there's Sorry. a New Testament, so. Okay. 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 Yeah. God, 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 uh, evolutionarily updated the thing. Well, listen. Your the old and new testament is the perfect example. Okay. Mm-hmm. Old Testament, okay. genocide good, right? New Testament, genocide bad. Are we in agreement there? Uh yeah. The, okay. There's so, a different so just the fact yeah. just the fact that there is an old testament and a new testament hmm. s- is saying that this was the intuition we had of morality in the old testament. The intuition was we are better off wiping out everyone who's a competitor in our local area. That's that's the old moral framework. And then in the New Testament, they discovered a new moral framework that was like, well, it's better if we get along with those people 
Hmm. And they develop new technology and share it with us. And that became a better moral framework. If we all work together as a human species on, on, on making our lives all collectively better, that's a better moral framework than, than Hmm. genocide. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So do you see, so do you see the, so do you see the old Testament is a moral framework that was supplanted by the new moral framework of the new Testament. It's, it's like the perfect example of what I'm saying. Okay. So that which spread further than the Israelites being Christianity. And well, I, I believe that Rome, the, I think Rome was the one that really got Christianity going. Uh, well, it, it came from this guy named Jesus mm-hmm. and he well, was I Jewish. Know, but... <laughs> he was, he was in this country called, uh, well, Galilee and, and uh, Palestine. But I don't think I don't think Christianity got wide scale adoption until Rome. I'm, I'm, well, you're, you're just saying I'm going to look at the chat because the chat is going to correct me on this. Obviously, all right, I'm going to read a couple of uh, super chats. Yeah, uh, read some super chats. M- Michelle, thank you so much. You're being a real trooper here. She wants to call out Canada. What did Canada have to do to its people to get them complicit in genocide? I, I assume against the indigenous people. They're failing, and that's why. The, the, those other people were failing. That's why we should uh, wipe them out. I don't know the context of, of uh, Canada quote, but super chat science, the change or the science changed. Benjamin, China will not win out in the long run. One child policy and other shenanigans will catch up. Well, good thing that they're not developing viruses that uh, rejigger their population. How do you, specifically. I mean, how do you feel about uh, Brett's gotten in big trouble for all his stuff about the virus and stuff. I feel I horrible for I like YouTube's yeah. chasing Brett to the ends of the earth. It's like, Oh, are, are they being persecuted by YouTube itself still? I think I, they took I thought they got them. demonetized. I don't, did they ever get read remonetized? <laughs> I'd never asked that. Yeah. I should know that. Uh, they're very busy. They're on a book tour and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Um, that, Have you read their a, book? Yeah, I had Heather okay. on um, too. We spoke about the book. Oh, sweet! Have nice. you read the book? Yeah, of course. Do you, I read you, it. I read you, it as soon as it came out. What, I'm, what you, I'm what, like a what, Brett's what my you, bro, man. I'm a wine a Weinstein fan. Wait, have you spoken with Brett yet? No, not. Uh, well, I we've DM'd back and forth a few times, okay. but you guys haven't had I, a Team W show. Up I there. haven't really talked to him. Yeah. Okay. We don't, everyone always tries to get us to get people on the show, but I just, it's like, okay. it's so weird because Brett Weinstein is going to come into like a thing that we kind of conceptualize as a comedy show where we're just, <laughs> we're basically trying to make each other laugh, telling like obnoxious jokes. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't understand morality. Mm-hmm. every time I talk about ethics and morality, I just, I reach this limit. If you ask why people just eventually mm-hmm. say, because, 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 but humor, mm-hmm. humor is either funny or not. Mm-hmm. And humor either works or not. Humor is either not funny to me, but I can see that it's funny or it's not. Funny. Humor's like completely socially dependent. Socially or subjectively? Like to what, to what degree? Well, yes, yeah. both really. No. Yeah. I should, I mean, I would love to do, I should reach out to Brett because I would love to do a, a talk with him on, because he has this li- lineage level selection thing that's supposed to be different than group selection. And I know a shitload about group selection because I've just read so much on it. And I'm, I mean, I lean more towards group selection. So I'm always curious what Brett, well, why Brett isn't in favor of group selection. He was supposed to, I actually, I prodded, um, David Sloan Wilson to have a talk with Brett because David Sloan Wilson is the, like the last holdout for group selection in evolutionary biology. And uh, they were supposed to do a talk and it never, it never came together. And I don't, I mean, David Sloan Wilson seems like a tad woke. I, I hate to say, but Who knows? I want, sometimes I wonder if maybe politics got in the way, which really sucks. Yeah. Nobody's immune to that, but yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with uh, Brett and Heather's. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I he, can... 
I, I could probably DM yeah, him and he would like him. respond. But I mean, if you put in a good word for me, yeah, definitely respond. They're on, they're on a book tour. I, I can hook you up with their publicist. It's always easy to get people to talk to you when they're selling something. I have read their book. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you're interested in it and we're, we're, yeah, definitely. Did it, did it make you cry in the shower? But it made, or, it did. It made, it actually made me cry because he didn't talk about lineage level selection in the okay. entire book. And I was What's like, what the you, fuck, Brett? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> All I cared about was lineage level selection and you barely, you didn't even go into it. Why do you, why do you, uh, why are you so interested in theists? Why, why is that such a fruitful conversation for you? Uh, theist? I, I, yeah. Well, I mean, you got really into Jordan Peterson or I don't, I'm not going to say that you got Jordan, into Peterson Jordan Peterson is a secret atheist. I think he's like an openly praying person now. I don't no, know heard. he's yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. The closer you come to kicking the bucket, the more religious you get. And Jordan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jordan's had some trials and tribulations over the past couple of years. And it doesn't surprise me if he's going, hmm. if he's getting more religious, but he, he came on your radar and it seems like he activated you at least on the YouTube. Hell yeah. 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 But what was the magic there and how did that uh, well I, i'd been on youtube you? well i'd been on youtube you know trying to to basically get more people to understand jonathan heights work and you're just singing it from the mountaintops just preaching i the was hype. i was yeah i was doing the best i could but uh i realized that jordan peterson was saying a lot of the same same things as jonathan height but just in a way that captivated people a lot more hmm. so once once uh, jordan peterson hit the scene i realized jordan peterson could get heights out deep ideas out into the world better than height could so that's that's the main reason i became interested in jordan peterson and just his like his ideas are fascinating well you could could you explain what you mean by captivating what what do you do you understand the peterson recipe yeah the definitely recipe. i've i've talked i've talked to uh paul about this paul vanderclay a lot because a lot of people that are religious peterson appeals to them because he speaks in a in a religious way that they understand and respect but what a lot of religious people don't understand is that Peterson is very careful with his speech. You know, what is rule one? Be precise in your speech. Mm. He's very careful to, to frame everything in a, in a scientific materialist mm. framework. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily believe Peterson is a materialist. I think he does believe in the supernatural, but he speaks in a way that doesn't doesn't um, doesn't appeal to the supernatural in any way, shape, oh, or okay. form. Yeah, 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 or violate certain principles yeah. of, of. It's kind of like in materials. it's kind of like in screenwriting or or storytelling. A lot of people have very strong opinions about breaking the fourth wall. Is it okay to talk to the audience? Is it okay to, you know? for the characters to come out and say, we're in a play right now. How crazy is this? Yeah. Uh, Jordan Peterson kind of has his fourth wall with the, the materialist framework. Like he, hmm. he may believe in a supernatural world, but he does, he doesn't break the, the, he doesn't break the fourth wall of materialism when he talks. Mm -hmm. And I, um, so he ends up saying a lot of things that I think religious people can interpret in a supernatural non-materialist way but they can also be interpreted in a materialist way that they're not necessarily perceiving mm. but i am perceiving i definitely perceive it so mm. i've never i've never heard jordan peterson i mean i i guess i have a couple of times and it stands out but it always seems like peterson leaves himself an out there's one story that jordan peterson tells about uh like it's a ghost story type situation do you know that where like yeah, there's something in the right trunk right. or there's some there's something going on in his uh in his truck or something in it um yeah i can't remember the story okay but uh but it's Ooh. definitely a supernatural story okay well he's yeah. got the union like a ghost or an aberration yeah. is in the trunk of some old car or something like that okay. yeah. but he doesn't look in the trunk and i keep thinking 
You mo- <laughs> <laughs> Peterson, what are you doing? Well, that raccoon is going to die in the trunk. Let the <laughs> raccoon out. What's your fourth wall that you'll never break on camera? What? What do you mean? Do you have a fourth wall like your materialist fourth wall, like the 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 one thing Bill, you like won't Phil. violate? I mean, I'm all about exploring ideas and stuff, but okay. I mean, I don't like mm-hmm. I'm a I am a materialist. I can't I can't really change that. I don't believe in the supernatural, no. And I am an atheist, even though, I mean, slews of people on YouTube have always tried to convert me to. Hmm. A theist position are you Nothing a theist either. or uh are you an atheist or a theist i can't be an atheist mm-hmm. uh but um being a theist is not easy um You're, so, so you are a theist um it, it's difficult to talk about because either you either it's there for you or it's not and if it's not there for you, then it you're, you either will it will become there for you or it won't. So me talking about it being there is like trying to talk to a fish about a, a snow, you know. I mean, you're making it more confusing, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> you're not less confusing. <laughs> I was supposed to be unconfusing. <laughs> you're supposed to clear. You say yes, I believe in God, Adam. I have a problem with the human faculty of belief because it gets mm-hmm. in, it gets in the way of communion or participation mm-hmm. with uh, a higher frequency that that mm-hmm. is completely infused with the material reality. But human beings are can sometimes be a little bit higher than the material level mm-hmm. in in their relationship to a bigger, a vaster bandwidth of mm-hmm. what's going on. Sounds very Donald Hoffman. Which I like. Oh, Donald yeah. Hoffman. I don't. I don't know. You're so well. You right. should. Yeah, watch his videos, and you'll. That'll. Oh, he's a video mind. maker. Is he still alive? You like every book I've read that now you can watch talks. It's great. I yeah. know. That's yeah. That's Donald Hoffman thing. is still alive and lives not too far from me, which I always oh, think. Oh wow! I you guys, do you guys shoot pool? Up. No. Oh. It's a pandemic. Nobody's shooting pool. Bad. Wait, is it it's still a pan, <laughs> pandemic in California? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing around. No, we're getting over our pandemic, but you right. you guys are locked down. Do people know where you live? Or I, I I'm, wanna... I'm in Olympia, Washington, which is oh, okay. So cool. people know. Yeah. yeah, people know. Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles. Everyone oh, knows. So that's yeah. a very. Are you okay? Comfortable? Like stating that you're in Los Angeles? People can yeah. just walk down the street. People down, know. And, like whack the bubble tea out of your hand say people know in Los Angeles. yeah when is your comic book going to be printed finally uh i'm hoping to get it done in the next two months we're, oh, wow. we're behind schedule right now but that's because i got a sh- like a i got a bit of a shoulder injury i was doing 10 hour days working on it and i uh got you know repetitive strain that kind of thing Mm. now i've started working out i gotta get jacked as soon as i get jacked i'll be able to draw 10 hours a day again but are you gonna live stream your calisthenics you ever think hell no yeah Yeah. maybe that's my fourth wall there i'm not exercising on camera (laughs) (laughs) i'm definitely not how are we doing on super chats ben you're raking in the i think we're good you're getting we, rich we on this good. stream. This is great. Oh yeah, so rich. I like to see. I like to see my buddy Ben making some money. Ben, you'll banana be a, bread. You'll said be amazed. Bit. You'll be amazed how much more willing people are to super chat when you actually read the super chats. Okay. I talked to Ben yesterday, and Ben told me he has a problem reading the super chats. I, I, was I like, do when it's just me on. Stream. Oh, I was talking about with the James Lindsay stream. It's really difficult. I get it. Yeah, it's if difficult you, if you, to. The thing to do with well, I don't. The thing is, I though, could have him back on like 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 the next day, like you guys do. Like, okay, James, we're just going to talk super chats. No, I. This is the thing that I don't get, because James Lindsay, if you want to do an interview with James Lindsay where you don't do super chats, just do an interview with James Lindsay. But if you're going to do a live show, super chats are part of the fun. Like people want to okay. interact with you guys. I'm sure they have a ton of questions for James Lindsay, which. Like that's why people are like 
Like I, I, I could probably, you know, string together half a dozen questions for James. We talk, James comes up on our show from time to time. And well, we, we should all, we should all converge upon your, your channel. Yeah. We, um, we do a Sunday stream. That's for uh, sure. J- he's not on Twitter today. So I should have probably had him try to be with you and me, but I, I don't want to deal with Skype or Zoom and, and stuff yeah. like that, but we'll, we'll make it happen. I think it'll be fun. This is better because you and I can talk. James would just dominate the conversation. James is a dominator. <laughs> None of us would get any more. <laughs> We'd both be like, ah, so glad and if you, do, you so many people are mad. If you interrupt James Lindsay, they get really angry if you don't just listen to them. Well, no, I wonder if people are learning stuff about you too. Because, I mean, I honestly thought you were an enlightened centrist. I'm, I'm a little disappointed still, that you're not. Uh, how it am I not? Like you're, can, 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 we, can we falsify me? Can well, we it seems more medicine? like you're a fence sitter to me. I mean, I just, <laughs> I don't like, I mean, okay. far, I don't, it's, it's funny that centrists are often called fence sitters, but you legitimately seem like a fence sitter. Well, yeah, but, but okay. Well, I, I'm kind of a fence sitter, but I, I, I'm the, I'm the one like, like grabbing the legs of the person on the fence and just yanking them. <laughs> oh my God. You're harder. You're onto basically, the fence. You're like kicking them in the nuts with the fence. Well, yeah, I guess That's so. Terrible. Yeah. Me and gravity. No, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Oh, no. Stand sideways on the fence. You'll do fine. <laughs> Michelle Nave wants to buy whatever someone tells her on TV. Last chat will, was about will, China, not Michelle Nave for five Canadian. I will buy whatever someone on TV tells me to buy. Oh wow! Last okay. chat was about China, not Canada. Oh. Have you? Are you guys going to do a, a audiobook of your graphic novel? We thought about doing a read. Yeah, we thought you about do it. Yeah, yeah we have thought uh, about Sitch doing animate it. Man, our book is so good. I'm just. I want the artwork to be as good as the story. Is there like I'm a super... huge mythos that's going to slowly unfold over time? Maybe. I mean, we have to do. A, we. I think people are going to want us to do a book too. I mean, that's the thing. That's why you want the first book to look amazing. So people are in for a book too. I mean, some, sometimes you buy a book and you're like, eh, this is okay. I'm not, I'm not that interested in a book too. So. Yeah. Well, in a, in a world that's dominated by villains, Mm -hmm. is this the upside down world? Is this where evolution, evolution actually favors evil? And how would they know that it's evil if evolution. That's an interesting, that's interesting. That's an interesting concept that we fully explore. Oh, not in this book, but we definitely <laughs> talked about it a lot. You only have so much you can do, and obviously, we have we've we have a huge fight scene with Robot Hitler, so that took a lot. Robot, <laughs> Robot. That's taken a lot, uh, a lot of real estate. Roto is his name, Academic Adolf. <laughs> yeah. Quackademic Sorry. agent. I don't. I don't know this guy. I shouldn't. Quackademic agent, agent plays robot Hitler. It's fitting. <laughs> it's very fitting. The robot Hitler's killer, man. Oh God, it's so good. Really? Do, yeah, do, it's amazing. Do you tease? Do you tease these little uh, no. drawings? No, Look, not I've, even just like I've character spent, models. I've spent my whole life working on shows and like working on work to, secretly to like. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. I we I am gonna spoil it. I mean, not spoil it, but I am gonna show some work pretty soon here. Do you, do you uh, are you gonna uh, publish three uh, D printed models of the characters for we, people's three D Maybe we could. One of the characters is like super hot, so people would want that character. Is that yeah. you or, or Sitch? No, Champ. We do want to do an off story too, where we have a time machine. That Does she have a time- sidekick called Bit? No. Who's bit? That's a What's horse. That? That's a horse pun. Oh. The um yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a side story where <laughs> how do I turn my camera off here? <laughs> no, don't there don't. Oh no. <laughs> there we go. Oh crap. See, we do have a side story coming up that uh oh, no. that we um where we have a time machine. There's a time machine story where we get the time machine going and we, but the, the key, the problem with this time machine is that every time we time travel, we change sex. <laughs> so when we, oh, okay. So when we come out in a new time, we're a different sex. 
Okay. Oh, is this where the gender innovation? This is this is why you favor gender as an innovative principle because well, eventually maybe. you figure out a problem, like it helps you problem solve. That oh my god, that would be a good storyline if actually all of this woke gender ideology stuff leads to the creation of time travel. <laughs> Tell me that's not comedy gold. Tell me that's not comedy gold. You, Ben, can set this. Can you come back on stream? I can't do two Benjamins on a freaking stream. Okay. (laughs) Put me out of the frame. Okay. Sorry. I offended. What happened? You you, you turned off your camera because. Oh, and it messed it up? Oh, sorry. I didn't know. You didn't turn it back on. So. um, I did. I'm back on. Wait, you're back on camera? Yeah. Yeah, I turned it back on. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah. You're just on the other side of the freak. Oh, this is impossible. I don't know if I'm. I bounced be- oh. around. I'm sorry. I did. I. Shoot. I didn't think about it. No, that's okay. Uh, oh. I should have known Zoom messes up like that. It's just my 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 program. I'll get you. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Anyway. Well, I'm sorry about your shoulder, though. I'm uh, I'm glad that you're getting ripped, though. Get those mm-hmm. some of those washboard abs there. Yeah, my wife totally digs it. Yeah, but does she do laundry on you? She's Not yet, but she's going to eventually. Oh, I totally, I totally messed it up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm man. Sorry, I, I fixed that. I fixed that. I fixed that. I fixed that. <laughs> Chris Numo says, "I used to be a team, but now I'm with the B boys." Okay, maybe I'll look get at that. Me. You got your own team. I got my own team. Now I'm going to have to come on your show. I don't even know what people would rally around me. I'm not an enlightened centrist. I'm a Dustin Hoffmanite. Uh, Dust, fence is it Dust, uh, Dustin Hoffman is a fence sitter? Donald, sorry, D- Donald Hoffman esque theist. Sitch is a theist, though. So, well, he kind of he kind of doesn't have a choice. So. Oh my, now I know why you were saying, oh my God, because when I turned the camera off, it totally messed up your shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I got to teach you. I got to teach you some. Uh... OBS. Are you, are, are you in OBS? No, you're I'm not in OBS. i Ecamm Live as my program, but let's not buy it. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about bore, that. For the audience. Yeah. But we should we should rev up so you can do some uh, calisthenics, uh, pet your, kick your cat or whatever is morally advantageous to your evolutionary principles and work out get, get, gotta oh, get my workout in and do you, what, what do you do for workout me punching things like I, just, bags? I kick ass you just kick a bag it's just have you ass. seen the movie napoleon dynamite um there's a there's a tether ball scene in that i remember yeah tether ball is a good one have you seen <laughs> have you seen the movie gummo mm-hmm that's what I do. I remember it from Blockbuster, though. I get what I do is I get a bunch of a bunch of spoons and I put tape around the spoons and I and I, I lift weights with the spoons. <laughs> what like like sp- spoon verine or something like that? Yeah, spoon verine. I like that, like Wolverine, but with spoons. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> I, I, I think you I'm should make workout videos. I think you should do that. I think you should break that fourth wall. I can't, you haven't seen Gummo? Gummo is like an amazing movie. Uh, that, that, I remember it from Blockbuster and not getting it. It was in the indie, uh, indie section. How much for the background painting you know of you the could. Blood Elf, Adam? You have a Blood Elf from World of Warcraft. The Blood Elf? Back, yeah. Uh, droning in the scenery. Is that, does that come up? Does it look like I have a hand on my face <laughs> <laughs> does that work what does i don't that know show up? oh okay the, the the background painting how much is it worth unless he's talking about the sheet but i don't think i don't much. that one i don't know i mean how much is it on your etsy no it's not that's a totally original that took me like months and months and months to do so i don't mm. i would have to work up a price on that i'm not okay. exactly sure i i have a i shot a video painting that whole painting and i still haven't put the video together either like a time lapse yeah time you lapse haven't, yeah you haven't you haven't put that together no this Just one down it. here someone offered me 10 grand for but i didn't part with it the mickey's said, versus uh, aliens yeah uh, 
That's harder to see what's it's going on. To see. But that's yeah. like an army of Mickey Mouse's versus an army of aliens. I remember under, like you fighting. That. Yeah, that's exactly. Kinda, that scares that one scares me a lot. Yeah. It should. I wouldn't it's buy terrifying. it. It's terrifying. It scares me too much. <laughs> yeah. Cool. No, I feel like I've learned. I feel like maybe I've educated your audience even more about your perspective. Well, yeah, yeah. Now that now that they know I'm a bloody fence setter, and that you mm -hmm. are, we don't know what you are. You're an enlightened centrist and mm -hmm. somebody who thinks that genocide is on the face of it evil, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever that means. That's like a really hot take there. <laughs> I mean, no, you literally said. On the face of it, it's evil, and I say it's evil, and God says it's evil too. Therefore, it's evil. So, it, uh, yeah. And evolutionary proves time and again that that. Why would you evil. argue with God? No one should ever argue with God. Uh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's more than uh, that's above my pay grade, man. I ain't, I ain't one of those guys. I'm gonna argue with God. I have enough time arguing with my demons. Common cure for two dollars says Adam and Ian Crossland collab when. Is Ian Crossland an artist? I thought didn't he lived in Southern California for a while, right? Ian Crossland is the guy who's on uh, Tim Pool, right? Do you know who Ian Crossland is? Are you talking to me or the check? Because I don't know who he is. You, I, you I am, bet. I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I'm very ignorant. Ian Crossland is a producer and writer known for Timcast R IRL. He's also he's got an IMDb page. Yeah. Oh, maybe wow. we, maybe we can get Crossland for Social Justice Detective too if we ever make it. I mean, wait, is that in the works? You guys going to do a go go fundy fundy thing? He's in. A, he Ian Crossland is in a movie called Scream of the Bikini. That sounds good. I'd check that movie out. Would you watch a movie called Scream of the Bikini? I probably would. But how do bikinis scream? Aliens. Also in Aliens in America, he plays high school boy. Oh. Yeah. Not high school boy too, but high school boy. My crazy love. He plays a drunk Derek. I yeah. I just discovered Ian Crossland was a actor recently. I don't. Someone did an interview with him that I listened to. He's like a big li libertarian, also crypto guy too. So crypto. Do you have crypto? Do you believe in crypto? I don't own crypto. No, but I do. I sooner or later, I'm going to do some NFTs because NFTs fascinate me. I, I think NFTs are cool as can be. Hmm. I, I don't, I have no idea. Non fungible tokens. Yeah. Chris they're... Laycock for $4.99 says, How does a robot decide what is relevant when mm. robots enslave humans? Will it be good and moral? Yeah. What if evolution just sides with the bots, dude? That's the thing about moral systems. They are meant as a tool for your community, not other communities. So if if robots have a moral system that ends up subjugating us, it will be a good moral system for them, but a horrible moral system for us. I mean, this is the this is basically every alien and movie alien invasion movie ever because yeah or virus or pandemic or whatever we're just I mean, we're just COVID's struggling just, dude covid's operating according to its own morality hell yeah it wants to spread and switch things up again again and spread again and switch things up and spread again has the pandemic been hard for you uh it's on my nerves it frustrates me but i don't know what to think about it did you go out a lot before the pandemic? Were you like a social person or were you? you I much... wasn't. No, I, yeah. I, I fell behind on that. About 20 I mean, I am ago. a social person, but I just, most of my, well, I guess I, no, cause I am, I was really social in, in IRL too, but that kind of came to a halt, but I guess I just supplemented with online social. Adam, were you involved in a movie called the pinch? I was, yeah. I pr was a producer on that movie. What What is it like being a producer? Do you is that better? Badass than Badass women constantly throwing themselves at you. Me like, like saying, I, I'm are, married. I need to, you know, just chill out. Just okay? give me coffee. And, I understand and that, that you're trying to get a part in our next movie, but wow, just chill. Take the it. Power. Take <laughs> no. I'm only, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. On the face of it, you're a good person. It was a it was a low budget movie. So it was not really 
I mean, and I was, um, I was a basically just working on different things, different aspects of the movie, putting it together. So we had a, a number of producers. So how I long did that whole production take? As far as your the concerned? whole production, yeah, of, uh, of the pinch. The, the production was a three week shoot. Yeah, we were you shot. involved in post? Uh, yes, stuff? yeah. I sat in the editing room with Ashley, our director, for some time. Yeah, definitely. Gru- would, would some you, grueling days. <laughs> yeah. Would you Would you go back to movie making? Hell yeah, yeah. I love movie making. Yeah. Is there we, something Sitch and I might Sitch and I might make a movie. What's it uh, called? Ash, Ashley has another. Ashley has a script that's f- fucking amazing that I'm trying to get him to make, and we would get we um we've talked about working on putting together a a package after uh, we finish up with the comic. It's called Meat Cleaver Massacre. It's a it's a fucking a, a horror comedy that's just outrageous. It does play a lot with the. Uh, with religious themes which is super cool and it has like the main character is very much in the in the realm of like a dexter type character like someone that you're not supposed to like but you do like him because he's just like brutally honest and and (laughs) yeah it's a great yeah it's a great it's a great script i would love to make it but yeah no i would love to make a movie again sure we did the the pinch. I mean, I think it was like a hundred thousand dollar budget. I think. Where did that money come from? Uh, different investors. Okay, and then the you get la- to pay them back at the, the end. The well, or they lose their money or something. If the movie makes money, yeah, but okay, yeah. Can they you turn have, a movie into an NFT and then it becomes infinitely valuable? I well, I maybe. I believe that we did make our money back on the pinch we did make the hundred thousand dollars back by selling overseas uh television rights or something like that nice yeah. okay there you go that yeah. that's that's the real game is to sell those overseas rights there is yeah a lot of movies used to make money back on dvd but dvd sales kind of collapsed and the independent film market kind of collapsed with it now oh. there is a now there are I do have friends that are making movies that are like low budget movies for Amazon Prime that yeah. they're ending up making money on selling rentals. Yeah. Enough oh, okay. to but for they're like doing super micro budget movies. Yeah. They're selling they're they're doing like thirty thousand like super low budget movies, thirty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, and making enough money on Amazon Prime to make it worthwhile. My wife is constantly watching these movies and I'm like this like this movie is insanely low budget, like just <laughs> insanely. It's almost like YouTube content, but you have to you have to respect somebody that's able to 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 do that. So yeah, yeah. And, and she 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 gobbles them up for some reason. This is her her niche. Thirty thousand uh, dollar. There is something fascinating about watching a super low budget movie that's that's got decent writing. Is she is she in the film industry too? So she knows all like, no. the layers of creation. Okay, so she's exempted from that. So so uh, but, uh, Bull Moose wants me to uh, be replaced by Sitch or Sitch to be replaced by me. Oh really? Um, it, Bull it, Moose it, for dollar ninety nine. Adam should. Adam, you should replace Sitch with Ben. I can't yeah. do that. Come, oh, on. come on, this is this is basically the rental of a thirty thousand dollar straight to Amazon Prime budget mo- movie. Like, I, I'm basically a Amazon Prime budget movie. I think the pinch might be on Amazon Prime. This was a lot. It was a lot of fun shooting the pinch, actually. Yeah, I'm working on the Evergreen the musical. I can't. Are you gonna? Song to uh, are you Are you interested in movie making? Um, I don't know how to work with other people. As as uh, this is the problem stuff I've. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, you know, I should I should have moved down to LA and, and hooked up with you about twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could have been friends, and you could have taught me, and then I could have made big mistakes and and gotten away with. with I did. I mean, I did move to Los Angeles twenty years ago. So, oh, from <laughs> from uh, Modesto, Northern California. Yeah, 
I, I grew up in uh, Rockland. Oh. Are you from, uh, you're not from no, Madagascar? Let's, let's, <laughs> Redding? No. Let's, uh, not, let's not dox me too badly oh, here, okay? Okay, okay, fine, fine. fine. I didn't know. I grew like, up in Rockland going, in Loomis. I didn't know we were going to go into my entire life history. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know. Uh, human rights are arbitrary, not God-given dot thoughts. Mm-hmm. Human rights are arbitrary, not God-given. I don't know about human rights. We haven't talked about human rights. We were just talking about human wrongs. Like, is is genocide a human right? Human rights are arbitrary, not God-given. Human rights are not arbitrary at all. I completely disagree with the fact that that they're arbitrary. Arbitrary implies that you could give out any series of human rights and get the same kind of effect and that's wrong completely wrong yeah moral systems and brett talks about this all the time moral systems one of the problems of modern society is that people are are putting together moral systems all a cart they're like pick and choose i'm a little bit buddhist i'm a little bit uh christian you know i'm a little bit new age and Mm -hmm. Uh, Brett says, you know, those moral systems evolved as a set. They go together. <laughs> you can't necessarily break them up and think that you're going to get a the same kind of results if you implement them all a cart. Well, it's easy to say for somebody who's an atheist, though. I mean, mm-hmm. you're basically saying that, like, uh, you don't construct things a la carte. You just like know it on the face that this is good, this is bad, because you're you're smart enough well, to know beyond these systems. I'm not like the my moral system is inherited straight from Christianity. I was raised Christian, okay. So my moral system is Christianity, okay. Even though I don't believe in God, so that's the add-on. That doesn't matter. You, you you successfully graduated from Christianity with genocide being on the face of it wrong, and you're mm-hmm. free of all the other uh, metaphysical mumbo jumbo. I guess. I mean, I don't necessarily know. I mean, I, I don't know that it's a graduation. I don't know that I, I wouldn't categorize myself as above Christians. I think Christians probably are more satisfied with life than me as an atheist. So. Spooky Pen for $5 says, Adam, have you recovered from the MSM supercut from last Sunday? I think I have brain damage. What did you do? What did you do? I think I saw that. What was the supercut? It was about? amazing. Sitch cut together basically like Dante's Inferno of mainstream <laughs> media lies about Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, God. And piece them together. So they progressively got more and more just insane. They it was all go- mainstream. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's all MSNBC, God. CNN, oh, NBC. Oh, so bad. They had one guy on uh, this was, I mean, I couldn't even get through it. The one really super distasteful one was they invited on a guy that his kids got murdered at like Columbine or Sandy Hook or something like that as a prop for school shooters are bad. You know, if you have to say school shooters are bad, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like everyone knows school shooters are bad. It's like, you don't need to bring. Well, yeah, (laughs) they do. Look at you. I'm trying to be an enlightened centrist. Are you? That's not an enlightened centrist position. (laughs) It's not that's devil's not, no. advocacy. It's not. That's not enlightened. enlightened at all. No, I thought that's it was far from enlightened. Infernal centrist. Let's da- let's dabble in nihilism here. Maybe I don't know. That's not enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> ben has a dark side, guys. I don't know. It's just questions. This is like <laughs> this is crazy. Well, we just know. We just know <laughs> Ben's these dark. Ben's dark side is coming on. If you have to ask, then you're outside of the moral system. We can genocide you. Do you do, have you done any debates or anything? Cause like I've debated 
How do how do debates even work? I don't even understand how you how one pick someone you want to debate on a topic and you debate them. I mean, you're basically debating me on on morality a bit. I mean, I'm not debating. I'm I'm pressing you to see where it, where the rabbit hole ends. But I don't I don't care either way. Where I, the I, rabbit hole ends? What rabbit hole? Well, you're. I, I'm just I'm just putting pressure on. But like, I'm not mm-hmm. trying to win. I don't mm-hmm. do debates because somebody wins, and I, mm-hmm. I nobody I wins in a know. debate. But it nobody is nobody wins in a debate. It is. It is. Debates are great. In that they force you to examine your positions, which mm. I think is is a good exercise for anybody. Okay. Like you, I don't think you have really firm positions. Like, what's your position on abortion? Do you have a position on? Are you pro choice or pro life? I think it. I think that the consequences of taking human life lightly mm. are dire. So are you? So are you pro life then? I mean that doesn't really tell me uh i'm not gonna tell other people what to do but i think societally Mm -hmm. once we divorce uh Mm -hmm. uh, once we once we take children out of the equation once we divorce children from the act of sex Mm -hmm. then what is sex but pleasure and then what is what is what is sex itself i think you get i think i think there's a i think there's a case to be made that i can't make Mm -hmm. right now that leads from uh, uh, normalizing abortions to completely uh, erasing biological reality on a, on a sex based level. I think that there, I think that, that the, the pedigree of this, it all kind of just adds up and adds up and adds up. And then nobody knows, nobody knows what you sex don't have, is for. You don't, you don't have to answer. You don't have to. Did I not answer? No, I don't. Of course I, not. I, I don't know I, if you're pro-choice or pro-life. I have I, no I idea. I can't tell. The, uh, well, they're competing value sets. Like people will do what people do, and mm-hmm. if a technology is available for them to use, they're going <laughs> to use that. Alan right? Wentz says pro-fence. Pro-fence. Well, okay. <laughs> If, if genocide pro, on the face choice. of it is wrong, I'm pro-choice. But I you're think. but you're anti-genocide. Yes. Anti-genocide, yes. But pro-choice. Did you know that between Mm -hmm. 2012 and 2018, more black babies were aborted than born in New York City? Babies? They're aborting babies? I'm not not for aborting babies. Okay, well, what does abortion mean to you then? Baby killing is uh, detestable. I would not not condone baby killing. Okay, okay. But you're pro-choice. Well, are okay you okay with the choice you, to kill the baby, but not, I, it's not the I'm killing not for, of the baby? <laughs> you, no one gets any choice. You cannot kill babies. Okay. Okay. I am against baby killing, categorically. Okay, but you're pro-choice. Yeah. If if uh, like abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. But baby but killing it, not. Baby killing is like once it's. Once if it's, it's safe, a, legal, and rare, then what? once it's a baby, my God, no, okay. you're once having the kid. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Once you once you start futzing around with that, what's once? Yeah, once something is a baby, then a lot of do moral you have a, do you, start to tumble. So, but you're but it sounds like you're pro life. It sounds like you're not. Do you, like do you draw the line at conception? Is that where you're? I, I do Are not life I, I do not think that the state should be involved in um, mm-hmm. relegating that choice. I do not think that a oh, culture so you are that pro embraces, choice then. So you're pro choice. I don't think that a culture that embraces uh, mm-hmm. uh, that that violates the sacredity of life can persist. Mm-hmm. I think the evolutionary principle will mm-hmm. eventually uh, manifest itself. Yeah, I'm like if pe- if people are using abortion as birth control, like that's fucking disgusting. That's that's detestable. It is. So I mean, yeah. Okay, so something's uh, detestable. But I still don't know what your I still don't know what illegal. your position is. <laughs> well, no, I I think that life is sacred, mm-hmm. and that the society, the culture that starts to undermine that is going to lose its way. <laughs> I also think that he, uh, that that freedom and uh, uh, bodily autonomy with regards to the state state is absolutely sacred too, and the state that violates that um, has lost its way. So they say, 
uh rodrigo says ah adam is in the calling fetus something changes everything <laughs> i don't i mean i'm more if you're gonna have an abortion you should have it more at the zygote stage i mean the fetus stage starts becoming uncomfortable i mean as soon as it starts to look the more human it starts looking yeah. the more uncomfortable it is yeah but, it was but al also i mean I, it's, it opens up so many questions that I'm not really comfortable like turning it over to the state to decide. Yeah. I'm just saying, but we, New York we City still, between... just for the record, guys, we still do not have any idea what Ben's position is on this. I feel bad for even asking now. So. I think it's pretty clear mm -hmm. that I have one position with regards to policy and another position with regards to culture. Yeah. Yeah. And yet at the same time that there there's probably more arguments for me to figure out with regards to a feminist take or a female's take with regards to abortion. Mm. And 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 the consequences of uh declaring something evil or morally abject um also has a cost too with regards to people who've made that choice. And I don't want to judge or be in a position to judge. Mm -hmm. Somebody's made the choice to abort somebody. I don't want to, I don't want to judge. So them. you're, it sounds like you're pro-life, but you don't want to judge people who've had abortions. I think that, yeah, I think that life, I don't think that we should take life lightly. I do not think mm -hmm. that that is a good choice. Why? Well, I, I don't think we should take life lightly either, but I'm still pro-choice. Okay. But anti-genocide. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so categorically I guess, like, anti-genocide. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of waffly on genocide and waffly on, on, on abortion. <laughs> too, so just, like, I see both sides on all of these things. Actually, well, this is this is actually, terrible. I haven't advocated genocide. Don't, don't don't do it in my name. Okay, yeah, don't do genocide in my name. I think that that's categorically wrong because I did not give you permission to do that. And I have an, a strong opinion on people doing things in my name that I didn't give them permission to do. Yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. So we wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. It's been such a great time. Long overdue. I was on your channel Hell in yeah. 2018, maybe even 2019. I can't remember. It was back in my old cabin. Was it you came on Sitch and Adam, right? Yeah, you guys were talking. There's this guy us. with a with a mustache, like mm -hmm. with a really thick mustache. That mm -hmm. you guys did a whole like day talking about this guy's opinions, and he had two two Jonathan opinions. Stossel. He's got a mustache and he makes TV, or now he just makes a YouTube channel or something. But I think he was on. John, TV. It sounds like Jonathan Stossel. Yeah, he's got like really thick mustache, and you guys were talking about him. He triggers the shit out of people. <laughs> Hey, you? Are you triggered by Jonathan Stotzel? He triggers the shit out of Sitch. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Frick, uh, freaking art asked me, what's the oldest you would abort? I don't know. I think maybe 10 days, <laughs> 10 years old. <laughs> well, that's not a child anymore. It's, well, but then it, but it's not a genocide. baby either. Yeah. So, okay. Genocide is <laughs> only adults. Children are wrong. So somewhere between prepubescent or like pubescent era, it's okay to just wipe out a. <laughs> I'm just joking around. Fetuses anyway. and eleven year olds. That's that's your okay. Zone. I just I love how everybody wants to like they want to like <laughs> zero in on the day. I it's got to be different for. I mean, I'm sure. I guess the gestation is just, uh, pretty much the same. But you'd think I, it would be different. Like some, it seems like some women have their babies like two weeks early or three weeks early. Yeah, like to. I don't know to what degree they have a choice, but I know they can induce pregnancy. I don't know if no, no, no. Like they don't. I'm talking. Pregnancy. I'm talking. I'm talking. Nine months is kind of a a like relative thing. Like it usually fluctuates around. Yeah, yeah. You understand. But let's yeah, call yeah. it. Let's call it quits. People okay. want to. People always want to argue about. Okay. Stuff, so. There you guys.